Hi guys, hope everybody is doing great. Welcome to our channel of Sciences and Mathematics. I'm Ernest. Today we're going to look at uh, one of the uh, basic topics in biology, and that is uh, cellular organization. Now this topic is uh, important and uh, fundamental for us to understand some of the concepts that entail cellular organization, in a sense that from uh, studying this topic, we're going to understand uh, the uh, body structure, especially for uh, bodies that are made up of, of course, uh, this fundamental unit that we call uh, the cell. And therefore, we are going to understand some of the areas that we need to do research and find uh, treatments and therapies by understanding how the cell and the, the structure, of course, uh, works. Now, in this case, of course, we're going to see that uh, there is a concept of a development of uh, vaccines, whereby we need to understand when the body is normally functioning, and that is the normal functioning of the cells, and when there are defects. So in this sense, we're going to understand the concept of uh, disease, and therefore develop some of the strategies in which we are going to combat them like uh, vaccines, etc. So in a sense for the study of our cellular organization, it's going to assist us also to understand other topics, especially on the characteristics of uh, living organisms that we have already mentioned uh, in our introductory topics in biology. So without further ado, thank you and welcome. So for today, we're going to look at uh, this specific uh, concept on cellular organization. And as I've said, uh, this particular topic is uh, very essential. Now that we need to know uh, the basic building block of life that we have uh, referred to as the cell. Now, by definition, I've said that uh, this, the cell is a basic building block of uh, life. And in an essence, we can refer to it as the smallest structure and fundamental unit of an organism. Now, we're going to see the hierarchical uh, build up from the cell to the to the uh, I mean the, the tissues, the organs, and the organism in a different uh, topic, maybe when we are talking about the, com uh, the, the concept of a structure of our living organisms. Now, in the study of the cell, as I have said, uh, it plays a very fundamental role in life in a sense that uh, it provides structure for the body. Of course, our bodies that we possess, bodies of plants and animals. And in this case, we're going to see that apart from it, having the role of uh, providing structure. It is the place whereby the, uh, I mean the formation of uh, some food or, or rather where food is uh, converted into useful nutrients that the body needs. And we're going to see that uh, the cell in its <coughs> specific uh, structure is not uh, just generally generalized as such. I've just given two demonstrated demonstrations to give just a representation of the cell. As we go ahead, we're going to see that uh, cells have uh, different specializations in their functions and we're going to see that uh, they can assume different uh, structural forms in order to facilitate those specific functions. Now in this case the cell also facilitates the concept of uh, growth and we're going to learn that one in uh, mitosis and uh, that is a cell division that is known as uh, mitosis and also we're going to see that uh, in the concept of uh, reproduction or uh, the reproduction that we have talked in one of our videos, we're going to see that uh, this essence of cell specialization exhibits itself in uh, the sexual cells that we talked about, that is the male and the female meat. And those basically forms the summary of uh, the roles of uh, the cell as a basic building block of life. Now we have different types of cells, of, uh, as I've mentioned, we have uh, bone cells, we have muscle cells, nerve cells, ETC. And we are going to see that uh, basically all of them have uh, some similar characteristics in their functions. But uh, due to the concept of specialization that I've talked about, we are going to see that uh, they are specialized in the sense that they play different roles. Now from the basic two structures that I've given on the board for animal and uh, plant cells, I want us to just have a look at uh, the different the constituents that we refer to as cell organelles that are contained in those, these two sets of cells so that we can be able to understand their functions in as much as uh, or in as far as uh, supporting of life is concerned. So in this case, we're going to look at uh, individual uh, uh, different parts of uh, these internal parts and external parts of the cell so that we can be able to understand how they function. So in this case, uh, for giving the plant and the animal cell these uh, similarities that exist between the two and in as much as uh, they do function as the basic unit there are also differences in a sense that for animal and plant cells there might be some 
constituents that are either present in both cells or some which are missing. In this case, we're going to look at uh, one of the organelles. And they basically, the organ, when I talk about the concept of an organelle, it's a constituent of the cell. The different parts that are contained within the cell uh, are known as the cell organelles. Now, the first one is uh, the cell uh, that we're going to look at uh, under the cell organelles is the plasma membrane. Uh, this basically uh, forms the part of the cell that has got three layers, whereby one of them is uh, made up of uh, this specific cell. It consists of uh, three layers, whereby one of, of them is made up of uh, the phospholipid layer that is uh, sandwiched between two protein layers. Of course, for expansion, I might be I'm just uh, illustrate uh, this specific point, but it's basically made up of a phospholipid layer which means that it's a, it's a compound of phosphorus and lipids that are basically make up that particular layer that is sandwiched uh, between two protein layers. Now, this uh, particular part of the cell that is known as a plasma membrane uh, it has got what we call pores. Pores are very small uh, pores or maybe allowances, openings that allow uh, for the passage of maybe some of the uh, movement of substances uh, may be due to exchange. We're going to see that one later. And in a sense, uh, this specific uh, cell membrane or plasma membrane, membrane is made up of those poles and has uh, two main functions. The first one is that it allows a selective movement of substances in and out of the cell. And therefore, we can use the term that we refer to as semi-permeable in a sense that the concept of a selectively allowing materials in and out of uh, the cell is referred to as semi-permeability. So therefore, the first function is that it allows selective movement of materials in and out of the cell, both for the, uh, okay, this is for the plant, I mean the animal cell that I'm illustrating. And there, therefore, the second one is that uh, it of course encloses other parts of the cell that have referred to as Organelles. So therefore, the function is a selective movement, allowing selective movement. And the second one is to enclose the contents of the cell. Now, these are uh, this specific part that we are, well, uh, have said that is, uh, this other particular organelles are contained. Now, inside this cell, there is a fluid medium that basically forms part of all this enclosure whereby these other organisms are contained. Now this uh, specific fluid uh, medium is known as the cytoplasm. Uh, encloses or contains all these other cell organelles. It's known as the cytoplasm. And uh, it allows for the, 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 uh, the function or maybe the taking place of uh, some of the biochemical reactions which facilitate the necessary processes that uh, support life. And therefore there is a... Uh, the concept of uh, this particular fluid that is uh, known as a cytoplasm, trying to facilitate them some reactions. In that sense, this uh, one of the processes that takes place inside this uh, cytoplasm that we refer to as the cytoplasmic streaming. Now, the concept of a uh, cytoplasmic streaming comes uh, from the uh, essence that uh, this particular cell uh, enables different functions to take place and there has to be some kind of a movement or a flow uh, inside these cells that is driven by the, the forces of maybe resulting from the cytoskeleton. We're going to see some of the, 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 the terms that we can use for these specific uh, uh, sections of the cell. Now this uh, cytoplasmic streaming allows for the, of course, uh, the flow of uh, the cytoplasm inside the cell uh, that is uh, maybe driven by the, some forces and we are going to see that uh, these forces are very essential to enable some of the chemical reactions to take place and the selective exchange that we have talked about. Now at the center of this specific animal and uh, specifically the animal cell, this one is laterally placed it somehow to one of the sections and like this animal cell, so for the sake of uh, this one we are going to see that the nucleus is a uh, at a different location as compared to the animal and the plant cell. So therefore, the, for the nucleus, uh, it's a double membrane from this illustration of the animal cell that we can be able to see, uh, which is called the nuclear 
membrane membrane or envelope so if we'll uh, straight it on these specific sections now this also has got uh, some passages that allow communication between the inside of the nucleus and the outside environment and therefore <coughs> uh, this it has got a fluid mechanism inside here that is known as the nucleoplasm and now inside this uh, nucleoplasm there is uh, what we call the nucleolus which is illustrated uh, by this specific part now and then there's a uh, chromatin which i've not uh, of course indicated in this now the functions of the nucleolus is the manufacture of ribosomes now there are other parts of uh, the, 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 the cell which we refer to as organelles which I'm, I'm trying to illustrate these are known as the ribosomes and we're going to see that uh, the specific uh, position of these ribosomes are going to play a fundamental role um, that we're going to mention later now this, the nucleus acts as a center for manufacture of ribosomes uh, while the chromatin that is contained also in this particular nuclear nu I mean the nucleus act as a or contain hereditary materials which basically we're going to look at uh, in genetics and then we are going to look at uh, another a specific organelle which is the mitochondrion the mitochondrion <coughs> that i'm illustrating is a saucer so shaped uh, cell organelle that basically is contained inside uh, the, the the cell and uh, has got two membranes the outer one and the inner one now, as we can see from the inner one, there's uh, some kind of foldings which are uh, being illustrated. I hope that it's uh, legible. There are some foldings which are being illustrated that are known as the cristae that basically increase the surface area for respiration. We're going to see later that one of the functions of the mitochondrion is uh, respiration. And then we're going to see that uh, this specific part of the uh, cell or the organelle can be present in different uh, uh, maybe parts of uh, the body or different cells depending on their functions. Now there are some of the cells that require a lot of energy and therefore since respiration takes place uh, in this particular cell organelle, therefore its presence in large quantities refers to the set or a part of uh, the body that requires a lot of energy. Now one of them is the muscles that are contained in our bodies and then the sperm cells etc. So therefore in those specific organs, you can find that the mitochondria or the specific cells of those organs, you find that the number of mitochondria is uh, relatively large compared to other parts of uh, the cells of the body. Now, in this case, we're going to see also that there is uh, this particular cell of a uh, cell organelle that is folded. This is known as the endoplasmic reticulum. And we have this in this section, the uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum that I've, uh, I'm just indicating. And therefore, we're going to see that the concept between the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is that for the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, there are no ribosomes on its surface. But for the rough endoplasmic reticulum, it contains ribosomes on the surface. And by ribosomes, I refer to this a specific uh, uh, a spherical shape that forms uh, uh, this uh, on these specific parts. We're going to see their functions uh, shortly. So in this case, for the difference between the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, is that the rough endoplasmic reticulum has got ribosomes on its surface. Now the ribosomes that I've mentioned about which are indicated as spherical dots on this specific surface of uh, the uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum. And this section, of course, uh, they can be able to exist in this form, but the, for the smooth one, it does not contain the ribosomes on this surface. Now, the ribosomes are uh, this uh, subset that are uh, organelles that are spherical in shape, and they form sites for protein synthesis inside the cell. And then we have uh, this section of uh, the the cell that we, we, we call uh, or refer to as the lysosome. This is indicated at this specific point. And of course, this section of the cell assists in breakdown of large molecules, or maybe the some of the organelles that are worn out. This part of the cell that is known as the lysosome assists in breaking them down 
or in some cases maybe it can assist in the breakdown of a, maybe a, a dysfunction or in the entire cell. So in this case it consists of what we call a, a lytic enzyme which of course assists in this specific uh, process. Now there's another organelle, cell organelle that we are going to look at uh, that function to package and transport uh, glycoproteins and this is what we call the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi uh, bodies. Now in this case of course they also assist in the secretion of uh, synthesized proteins and carbohydrates apart from them packaging and transporting the glycoproteins that we have uh, mentioned. And of course there is uh, these functions, I mean these organelles that are adjacent to the Golgi bodies that we refer to as the centrioles. Now these specific parts of uh, the body are used in cell division and the information of what we refer to as the cilia and uh, flage flagella. So in this case, we can just have a look at uh, this specific organelle. We're going to mention it later, but the function of uh, these centrioles, as we have said, is uh, that they are used in cell division and formation of cilia and the flagella. Now, in this case, we're going to see that there's a difference between the plants and the uh, animal cells uh, insofar as the structures are concerned. As I've said, we're going to mention the difference between the two, since, of course, for plants and animals, their functionality can differ. Therefore, there's a different specialization for plants and uh, animal cells. Now, there's uh, this specific part or organelle that we refer to as uh, the vacuole which are basically sac filled with the fluids that we call the cell sap. And we're going to see that the sap inside of these specific vacuoles store sugars and salts. Now in this case, uh, we're going to see that uh, the, the, the vacuole, we have different, uh, we can have a different specialization for this specific part of the cell that we have referred to as the vacuole, which can be a food vacuole or a, a contractile vacuole. And of course, which we are going to see that they have a different functions whereby the food vacuole store digested food, whereas the contractile vacuole is used for removal of unwanted materials from inside this specific cell. Now, in this case, we have uh, basically stressed so much on the section of uh, this specific discussion on the animal cell, but in contrast, also we are going to look at uh, the a plant cell and try to see. Uh, different parts. Of course, we have seen there is a vacuole inside the animal cell, and in that case, there is also a vacuole inside the plant cell. If you try to look, look at, uh, try to compare the size between the two vacuoles for animal and plant cell, we're going to see that the vacuole in the plant cell is relatively small as compared to the larger vacuole in uh, plant cells. Now, in this case, there is a presence of a plasma membrane for both cells. And there's a lack of a uh, leucoplast and the chloro, uh, I mean the chloroplast in this animal cell, and also for the plasmodesma, it is absent. Now, actually, this organelle, uh, the, the plasmodesma, the chloroplast, and the leucoplast are absent in the in the animal cell, and also for the cell wall. But for the rough endoplasmic reticulum that we have talked about, the plasma membrane, the Golgi apparatus, and the nucleus. They are present in the animal cell. <clears throat> now in this case, uh, this section is the mitochondria. As we can see that it's uh, having an inner, uh, I mean, membrane that is folded, that is playing a specific uh, functions in this uh, specific part of uh, the cells. Now, in this case, uh, we're going to see that the plant cell contain, contain an organelle that is known as a cell wall, and this basically gives shape to the, the plants uh, that are uh, also <coughs> assist in providing protection and mechanical support. And so in this case, we're going to see that also it has, uh, allows the exchange of materials between uh, the outside environment and inside the cell. And uh, basically, as we have uh, looked at this specific part, we can see that there's a difference between the, uh, the, the plant cell and the animal cell. In that the, there's uh, some presence of uh, some of the organelles that we're going to see which basically are contained in the animal or the plant cells and absent in the other. One of them, as we have mentioned, is the cell wall that is present in plants but absent in the animal cell. Now, in this case, we're going to see that uh, the, 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 the plant cell contains the cell membrane, of course, uh, which also is con con contained in the, 
the this plasma membrane, which also is contained in the plant cell together with the cell wall. And now in this case, the plant cell consists of this specific organelle that is known as a chloroplast, but it's absence in a, uh, the, the, the animal cell. This specific organelle in plants assists in the manufacture of food uh, through the process of a photosynthesis. And the, it consists of a, a coloring matter, cream coloring matter that is referred to as chlorophyll that of course uh, assists in that specific function. And uh, we are going to see that uh, this one has centrioles. The animal cell consists of centrioles which are absent in the plant cell. And then we can see that there is a lysosomes which we had uh, seen at uh, this specific part and they are absent in the plant cells. And therefore we are going to see also that in the plant cell we have uh, an organelle that is known as a plasmodesma and are sometimes referred to as plasmodesmata. Now the, 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 the function of uh, this specific part of the cell that is known as uh, plasmodesmata is used uh, to act as a communication pathway for the cell to its adjacent member of the cell. As we can see that there is a disappearing part of the cell wall of another cell that is contained in this specific part. So therefore this one acts as a communication pathway between one cell and uh, another. So in this case, as we can see that uh, <clears throat> from the basic concept of the cell that we have talked about, which basically assists us in understanding our body structure, uh, of course, and body and animal structures uh, for plants and animals. And it's also going to assist us, as we said, in the development of, uh, of course, some of the treatments and therapies that we may need in case the normal functioning that we know has displayed some abnormalities and from our research work, all the information that we have from the cell, we can be able to develop therapies and uh, some treatments. Now, in this case, uh, from uh, trying to study the concept of the cell, as we said in summary, it is going to understand us, uh, to assist us understand the concept of our uh, diseases and uh, develop some of the vaccines that may be, of course, of essence in trying to combat them. So basically, as we can see, <clears throat> This fundamental concept of uh, the cell organization is uh, very much essential in us trying to understand other topics that we say, especially on the characteristics of uh, living organisms. So in this case, I hope that this is going to form a, a basis for us in trying to uh, study other concepts in biology. And maybe it's going to assist us in trying to answer some questions in case we are asked to state or maybe if, uh, explain the function of uh, different areas of the cell uh, constituents, which are basically referred to as the cell organelle. So I like to request uh, some of our members, maybe you have not uh, still subscribed, kindly subscribe, uh, go to, to YouTube, give us a thumbs up, and maybe engage with us in the comment section so that we can be able to be answering your feedback. So in that case, I'd like to appreciate each and every one of us. So that is, uh, I think, uh, the, the, the end of our lesson for today. Bye, God bless you.